obvious where he, it's obvious where he got a lot of his his musical roots is in the black, you know, with, with the black musicians. I mean, I I just I wish you. Sometimes you just make me so mad you turn things into a black-white thing. It is, though, Chris. Chris, let me hey, say this man, quick. my first album I ever bought was Michael Jackson when that's I was okay. nine years okay. old. Okay, okay, Nat King Cole, there, there's never Christmas without a Nat King Cole album. There you go. Playing. Okay, but, okay. I, I mean, but, Chris, it wasn't fair to all the other black entertainers who were out around the time of Elvis who were getting ripped off. You hear them come down here. I had the Platters. I had the, uh, some of the original Drifters down here. I had some Tams here. They were telling you, man, they didn't get what Elvis got. Well, I agree with you, but it wasn't Elvis's fault. It was society. Elvis could have turned it around with the stroke of a pen. He could have said, I want y'all to treat my brothers. He wasn't God, man. He's just a... Yes, he was. Y'all worship him. Y'all bowing down to Elvis no, right no. now. Hey, I got to tell you something else, too. All right. Uh, George Washington, yeah. Jefferson, they all had slaves. But yeah. you know what? What? So did a lot of black people in Africa. Bye, man. Bye, man. Oh. Go. Oh. oh. The old Africa trick. The old your people did it too trick, right? Yeah, right. All right, Ron and Brooke Haver, you'll be back. Kwame, Hugh. Now, look at here. Here's a blind man. Stevie Wonder, you know. Here he is blind, you know. Now, uh, if Elvis is a king, what is Stevie? You know? If Elvis is a king, what is James Brown? What is Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson is the greatest entertainer of all time, you know? And Stevie trained him, you know? Here is Stevie Wonder here. Raw talent. Elvis Presley was a sucker. Elvis Presley was a Negro impersonator, and you know it. The official three-day weather channel forecast is updated every hour. Guilty, and some of these South American countries are that, uh, that harbor some of these Nazi war criminals. If, if you can show me the sucker that fed Elvis Presley, I'll write out the writ for his habeas corpus. <laughs> well, wow, you really rough on Elvis. Elvis wasn't nothing but a sucker perpetrator, man. He made us suffer. Well, you know, Elvis, they had this black singer, I don't know what his name, he would come... He took to, away from the truth, Kwame. You know, he would come into the studio and sing a song, and Elvis would uh, sing it verbatim, I mean, I mean, word for word, right behind it. That's where he, he, well, he would make his uh, early music. I mean, this is a known fact. I knew a man, Bojangles, and he danced for you. You remember that? Yeah. For worn-out shoes, a ragged hat, and the snow down there. Mr. Bojangles, damn. Man, in jail somewhere. Bojangles. In jail somewhere, drunk. And Fred Astaire running around here dancing with Ginger Rogers. You talking about Bill, uh, Bojangles, Rob uh, Bill, um, Bojangles Robertson. Well, did you see in Living Color when they had that Elvis sighting last week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, that joke was great. Let's let me go. Say this, but let me say this uh, uh, one cool. thing. He made one song. Have you ever heard of Blind Lemon Jefferson? Yeah, Blind Lemon Jefferson. Yeah, they used to call me Blind Melon Jellin. That's what they call him, Blind Melon Jellin. He made one of his songs, Matchbox Blues. I don't even, a lot of people don't even know, know nothing about that one. Partner, all I can tell you is this. We can go back and forth, back and forth. And it, it's good for the audience for them to hear this, uh, and I didn't solicit this call, but if you just check the history of the sucker out, you'll find out he was a perpetrator. See, these women who idolize him, all they see is a greasy-headed dude with a guitar oh, in front of his pelvis, and pelvis rhymes with Elvis, and it's all a sexual thing, man. That's all it is. It was a sexual thing, and after all, I mean, and this is a... Woo, people are going to call me a racist when I make this statement, Kwame, but they know that if you take a white man and a black man sexually, it ain't no competition. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna test that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging up. I'm bye, my bye, bye. Ain't no competition. It ain't no competition. You know it. I'm serious. You ask, I tell you what. Don't ask me. You know what I'm saying? Don't ask me. And this is the gospel. You know, a black man and a white man. There's no competition. If you want to find the truth to that, ask a white woman. Let every heart say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis Presley has been cited. We've cited Elvis, and we'll be back in just a minute. He can't disclose his location, but I give you a hint. He's somewhere near here. Uh, not fully dressed and... Uh, Short hair and all crazy. And Cindy Lauper and Janis Joplin. Great talents. I love them all. You know, but Elvis, no thank you. No thank you very much. Let's go to Elvis. We, we've got a, 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 one of them Esquire insurance Elvises. Go ahead, Elvis. Oh, this, uh, is this Ralph? Yeah, this is he. 
How you doing? Is this the, the Prince of Late Night? Yeah, no, sir. I'm the oh, this Prince is of King Evening. on the phone here. I, I heard you talking about me. Yes, sir. You a uh, sucker. No, I, I don't believe I was a sucker. I, I just had to call you because I heard you talking about me. Yes, sir. I, I just got to tell you that I was a part of that music scene back in the early 50s. And I'll be glad to come on your show any night, uh, any time, and talk about these musical acquisitions. You can't do nothing for me but shine my shoes and listen to my show. Say what now? You can't do nothing for me but shine my shoes and listen to my show. Well, I, you know, I'm just trying to call up and make a, make an invitation, you know, to <laughs> answer some of those calls. And, and you ain't, questions you, got. you ain't even a good Elvis. Get out of here, sucker. Nikki in Southwest Atlanta, you're on News Radio 640 WGST. Yes, how you doing, Ralph? All right, Nikki. And you're right about the Elvis thing. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, if I go to the post office, they want to give me some of them stuff. So look, no. No way. Look, give me, give me the, give me the flowers. Give me the, the any, anything. Give me that, that love stamp. Give me love that love stamp. Give, give me, me anything. Give me you know? that. Hey, Philip Randolph for that Harriet Tubman stamp. Give me some real people, but don't yeah. give me no Elvis. I'm I ain't put my lips nowhere near Elvis. No, I'm telling you, but I'm gonna talk about this lady. What was her name? Inez. So we know her. Who was her name was her. Inez Day. Inez Day. You know, the, uh, the guy made it seem like where she was chasing after him, which might have been true. But I'm just telling you. Sisters out here, you know, they need to leave these white men alone. I, I'm, I'm against infidelity either way, whether it's yeah. interracial or intraracial. And a lot of times, news is biased. And I'm not picking our news. And Wade Metlock covered it today, and he did a fine job. But certain words that they use in the broadcast, like, let, let me read this to you, and I'm going to point out some inequities that I see that offend me from a personal perspective. Uh, he writes, the defense claims Stewart responded with violence when Ms. Day attacked him with the pipe. But in neither confession introduced into evidence, to date it, Stewart mentioned it. And this is the part I don't like. He did say she became abusive of him after their affair had cooled and told him that she was pregnant with his child. Now, if a relationship had cooled, you know, it don't seem like somebody going to get pregnant all of a sudden from a cool relationship. And then here's the word I don't like, that he would have to abandon his family and marry her. He had already abandoned his family when the first time he laid in bed with this woman I his day. You know, so he tried to make it look like she came up out of the clear blue sky like the Wicked Witch of the East saying, if you don't do this and you don't come to me, you know, they're trying to make this dead woman look bad and she can't, she's not around. The only reason why, you know, making them look bad is because she's black because most of them think that most black women are whores anyway, you know. He strangled her. First he hit her with all he had. You know, he just, boom, broke his hand, he said when he hit her. Knocked her down and took a copper pipe, and it's flexible, and took a copper pipe and crushed her esophagus and crushed her neck. And then took her lifeless body and crammed it in a 55-gallon drum that he bought for that purpose. He bought that 55-gallon drum just for putting her body in that, and he stored the body. He kept the body. You know, I mean, this is heinous. This is the most heinous. This is more heinous, and, and I'm against this guy Burgess with the golden gun who, who was holding up these folks uh, in these motels who shot this Vietnamese man because he wouldn't pull his hands out of his pocket. You know, he's getting uh, electric chair in four life terms. But just because this sucker is the Decatur, DeKalb, YMCA board or chairman of the board, you know, big time church goer, and he happens to be white, you know, and this woman happens to be black, he's not going, he can get it just like that handcuff man. Did you follow the story on the handcuff man? Yeah, he's, a, he's not going to get too much. Now, I'm against homosexuals. They know that, and they know exactly Exactly where I stand, but on this particular issue, I will side with the homosexuals in that uh, the handcuff man that, it, that was not justice handed down in this case. This sucker, because he was rich, because he was an attorney, and because he, you know, I mean, all of those mitigating circumstances and the, the perception of the homosexual men as being prostitutes, you know, I mean, they didn't get a fair shake. And I'm not, I'm not a proponent, nor will I stand up for homosexuals on anything. But on this particular case, I side with the gay community. I don't think the handcuffed man got what he deserved because of his victim. And the same thing with this man, this sucker, former chairman of the board of the DeKalb, the uh, DeKalb, Decatur, YMCA, because of his victim, just like the handcuff man's victim, he's not going to get what he should get. But you turn it around, you turn it around and let it be Julie Love and you let it be Emmanuel Hammond or you let it be Amp Wiley or some woman sitting in the park eating some Cheerios and you let that black man stomp her heart out or you let that black man crush her body, crush her neck and put her in a 55 gallon drum then the whole world will come to an end between 9 and 12. Hi, this is Matt Stewart. Join me and the 640 WGST Chicago Pizza and Sports Arena team. For the In a world of 
of complicated pricing and hard and fast car rental rules, budget lets you be flexible. With our new flex rates, the longer you rent, the more you save on any economy through full-size car. Say you rent a car for two days, but end up staying longer. With flex rates, your average price per day will actually drop. Call Budget for complete details. When it comes to your car, your price, and your schedule, we're flexible. The smart money is on Budget. Jumanji has spunk. Spunk. Don't miss the Jumanji production of Spunk. Spunk. Which is three tales by Zora Neale Hurston, adopted by George C. Wolfe, with tales of survival told, told in, the, in the key, key of, of the, the blues. blues. Spunk comes to Atlanta February the 7th through March the 1st at the 14th Street Playhouse. For tickets, call 873-1099. For group information, call 876-6346. Experience Jamondi's Spunk. Back at you, back at you. Hey, we got time for you, Yvette, and you. We'll take you on the mobile phone and John, possibly. 233-WGST, 1-800-FON. WGST, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. All right, Yvette, talk how you like. You're live on News Radio 640 WGST. Hi, Ralph. Um, I this is Yvette Gilbert from Lithonia High School. Yes, ma'am. And I just wanted to call you and thank you for coming out and speaking to our student body. And um, I think they learned a lot from what you had to say, and um, and I always learn a lot from you, as I listen to your program, um, as much as I possibly can. Well, thank you very much. I was so pleased to see that uh, you were very attractive, and it's always nice when I go out on these uh, public speaking engagements. I run into some nice-looking sisters, and then to find out that uh, you and I had a little more in common. That uh, once upon a time. You used to walk the uh, ivy halls of uh, Spelman College, what That's we right. affectionately call the yard. And now to see you in your element dealing with the young people, you are to be commended on a daily basis. See, I just stopped in for a couple of hours, but you're there on an everyday basis in the trenches doing what needs to be done, and I really applaud you. And if, if at any time I can come out there and be of any service, Debbie Gray sent me a beautiful letter. I, fa I faxed it off to uh, everybody here at the station. And I got another letter from a volunteer teacher that's out there on a four-week assignment, a uh, nice letter. So I appreciate it, and it, it, it was my pleasure, you know. And I just, it was the only bad news that I got when I was out there was the fact that you were married. <laughs> <laughs> that's cold, that's cold. Then y'all went and got a single sister for me to meet, you know. That's, that's, that's just cold, that's cold. <laughs> but thank you so much for the invitation. Let's make it a yearly thing, you know. That, I, that's fine with me. I, would, I think that's a good idea. And I'll be keeping my eyes on the uh, Kanye's, uh What's the legal paper out there in Conyers? In Atlanta, it's the Fulton County Daily Report where they file all the divorces. When you get ready to file, what publication is it going to be in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll be in there, Ralph. Oh, I hope okay. not. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to that lucky man, and thank you for calling, Yvette. Thank you. All right. Keep let's up go. the good work. I will, darling. I bye will. Bye. All right. Bye bye. We got to take a break. Got to take. Oh, Hugh. All right, Hugh. I tell you what, John. I tell you what, we'll pay for the call if you just hold on. We got to take a break. We got a CBS update. You know, I tell y'all. Two three three. WGST one eight hundred F O N W G S T. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I'll do that later. See you tomorrow. Call me next week. Put me down for next Friday. Next month looks pretty good. Finally, an investment plan for people who like to put things off. Can it wait? Particularly the IRS. It's called the 12 month tax deferred CD from First American. And it lets you put off paying taxes on the interest you earned in 1992 until April of 1994. Oh boy. Where do I get back from vacation? The 12 month tax deferred CD from First American Bank. Why pay today what you can put off until tomorrow? Next year. Let's do one. Member FDIC. Call me. If you miss a day, you miss a lot. News Radio 640 WGST, Atlanta's first choice for news, traffic, and weather. Good evening. We have cloudy skies and 61 degrees. I'm Gene Michaels, News Radio 640 WGST. Tomorrow, 
We'll have some showers in the morning, but they'll clear off in the afternoon, and we'll have a high of around 60 degrees. Atlanta's official three-day weather forecast is coming up. Here's what's happening at 9.30. President Bush has won the South Dakota Republican presidential primary. With 10% of the vote counted, the president has 69% of the vote. On the Democratic side, the early return shows Senator Bob Kerry. Let's get an update now on the returns from CBS News. Campaign 92, I'm Randy Riddle in Sioux Falls. Nebraska Senator Bob Kerry has been saying that his campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination needed a lift from South Dakota, and today's primary gave him that lift. CBS News Survey Director Kathleen Frankovic. Bob Kerry has won the South Dakota primary. Right now, Bill Clinton and Tom Harkin are really battling it out for second place. It's unclear which of those two is going to finish second. Paul Songus and Jerry Brown are far behind, and they are in their own struggle for fourth place. Exit polls indicate Kerry's voters were concerned about health care and the economy. Kerry South Dakota campaign coordinator Ted Munster is not the least bit surprised. Well, those are certainly the two dominant issues in the country, jobs, economic opportunity, and health care. If Bob Kerry can capture uh, that support, he's going to capture this country. The partially tabulated vote has Tom Harkin running second. David Kranz is managing editor of the Sioux Falls newspaper, The Argus Leader. Kind of a, a frustration with the Harkin campaign is that they've really never caught hold. Uh, and I think he preaches here much the way Hubert Humphrey did, and I think that Kerry's seen more in the, the John Kennedy mold, and I think that there's uh, almost a, a belief that the old-time religion that Harkin uh, preaches is uh, old school, out of style, out of date. Campaign 92, I'm Randy Riddle, CBS News, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The official three-day weather channel forecast from News Radio 640 WGST. We can expect widely scattered showers to continue across the metro Atlanta area through tonight and a slight chance of a thunder shower overnight low near 52 degrees. Still a few lingering showers in the morning on Wednesday, but later in the day we should start to see the clouds break up a little bit, a high of 58 degrees. Becoming partly cloudy to mostly clear with a low of 37 for Wednesday night, so cooler temperatures are coming up at least for the overnight hours. Thursday looking good, mostly sunny to partly cloudy with a high of 59, and mostly sunny in 63 for Friday. With 24-hour a day coverage at the Weather Channel Cable Network, I'm Brent Bass for 640 WGST. Thanks, Brent. We have cloudy skies, 62 degrees at Atlanta's official weather station. News Radio 640 WGST. Hi, this is Don Sutton for Marietta Toyota, Cobb County's oldest Toyota dealer. Are you thinking about a new Toyota car or truck? Well, you ought to get yourself on over to Marietta Toyota this week for the $99 sale. That's right, brand new 92 Tercels Corollas, Silicas, and trucks. Just $99 over dealer invoice. And that's right, any new 92 Toyota Corolla in stock, $99 over dealer invoice. Say you need a 92 Toyota truck? Find one at Marietta Toyota, $99 over invoice. Now, all the invoices are right there on display for public viewing, so there's no guesswork, there's no gimmick, and there's no chance of hidden charges. How about a new 92 Tercel or Sporty Celica? Again, $99 over invoice. The entire inventory is eligible. The invoices are on display. Come in and make a great deal with the Marietta Toyota salesman. This Saturday, free hot dogs and hamburgers, 11 to 2. Marietta Toyota, 750 Cobb Parkway in Marietta. The $99 sale ends Monday. Don't miss it. If you ever get your news from an FM station, you should know that they're getting their news from us. Cut out the middleman and get the story here first. News Radio 640 WGST. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I'm not against an Elvis stamp. I changed my mind during the break. I don't mind an Elvis stamp. If we're going to have to have a commemorative stamp, I think the design needs to be that one of an Elvis laying in a coffin or the one of Elvis. I wouldn't mind having a picture of Elvis on the stamp taking an enema in the bathtub, you know, or, or sitting there on the commode dead, you know. That's the picture they ought to have. Word. That's the picture. Ow. Hugh, on a mobile phone, thank you for holding your live on News Radio 640 WG. Are you there finally? Yeah. <laughs> Ralph? Yeah. Uh, on this Elvis thing, you know, he appealed mostly to the girls of our generation. I'm uh, 60 years old, and I grew up uh, when he was coming along. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, even his blue suede shoes didn't appeal to the boys. <laughs> those days, so so you, you just, uh, when you're talking about him, just put that off on all the girls. Okay, okay. But uh, <laughs> Nat King Cole, I think you kind of confused on the geography of where that happened in that. Okay. That happened in Montgomery, which was his hometown. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Nat was from Montgomery. Okay. And that's where that happened. I stand correct. <clears throat> and that was a redneck rodeo was all that was down there. <laughs> and the audience that night uh -huh. was mostly male. Okay. And it was strictly the rednecks. Okay. And uh, for what it may be worth to you, uh -huh. uh, you know, I grew up in Tennessee. Okay. And... Uh, we all weren't like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just had to add that to your program. Well, I appreciate that contribution. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Hugh, for holding. Thank you, man. It's a good, honest soul book. You know, hey, that's what makes this show great, you know? Not me. It's not me. It's the callers, you know? All right. Victor Cascade, you're next on News Radio 640 WGST. Uh huh. How you doing, thou, Mr. Ralph of Ben Hill? Doing fine. I am an Elvis impersonator. Yeah. You're a poor one. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, I just uh, want to say that, you know, you, you might have hit the nail on the head, the fact that, you know, Elvis, it probably hang around a lot of black people in his time. And, like, you know, it's not so a sympathetic situation. But, like, you know, uh, during that revolution, the things that he was going through, yeah. he might have in himself and stuff. Like, remember that Cadillac he gave to that black lady after he hit her? Yeah. Do you remember that situation? Yeah, I saw it in Jet Magazine. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh -huh. talking about, you know, gave a brand new black pink Cadillac or something like that in yeah. nature and stuff. Like, you know, he may have seen that, but he couldn't do nothing about it because he was such a big white star. Right. Okay, but, like, you know, in this process, it's kind of like, uh-huh, yeah. But his gyrations and everything, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, white people didn't have no rhythm, but they had no rhythm. He didn't say it. Okay, bye, Victor. Bill, Midtown, you're on News Radio 640 WGSD. Is this Ralph Radio? Uh, yeah, for the next 30 minutes. Ralph Radio. Hey, Ralph, uh, I was calling about Elvis. I was thinking the thing that made Elvis uh, hit out on the scene here is he was the first, uh, first person, uh, black, white, whatever, to shake his butt. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. No, no, sir. As far as shaking butts and showing butts and singing on stage and setting the country on fire, there was a black woman by the name of Josephine Baker who set this country on fire and went to France and became a patron saint of the French. She was uh, uh, active in the French Resistance during World War II, and she was just a great entertainer, and she was the real deal. They had all kind of white imitators, but Josephine Baker was the real deal. She took off all of her clothes. Was he the first man, though? Uh-uh, uh-uh. You had a lot of other black men out there doing it, man. You had, like, Cap Calloway, yeah. who would who would do a thing on stage. You had the Nicholas Brothers who would dance, and you could go all up and down Harlem. There wasn't a club up and down uh, 125th Street, Lenox Avenue, where they didn't have some type of black man in there on the stage gyrating. This was a thing that Elvis picked up, co-opted, and took out to the white folks. It's a Larry Bird type situation. Larry Bird spent all of his life hanging around black folks playing basketball, and he got real good, kind of like Pete Mary. And then when they came to the league, everybody went berserk. You watch how many folks come to the Omni Friday with green jackets on, worshiping the Boston Celtics and worshiping Larry Bird. When they think of the Boston Celtics, they don't think about Bill Russell and uh, Casey Jones and Sam Jones and Sat Sanders. They think about Larry Bird, Bob Cousy, and them other suckers like Havlicek. That's but when, Boston. That's Boston. But when you see a Michael Jordan come on the scene, he has pale. He has so much dwarf Larry Bird, you don't even hear. You know, they used to lead off all the the sports shows every night with the Boston score. Now they bury Boston's loss way, way down in the sports column, man, because they don't want people to suffer through the agony of Boston losing because that old mystique of the great white hero. I mean, if Michael Jordan was white, let's face it, it wouldn't even be Pat Buchanan. It wouldn't be George Bush. It wouldn't be no Songus dude. It wouldn't be no Clinton dude. If Michael Jordan was white, he'd be the president. He'd be Elvis. Hank on the mobile phone. You're on News Radio 640 WGST. I got one Elvis Zinger that I got to start off with. <laughs> I just left a class service station, went around to the back, you know, where we're supposed to go to go to the restroom. <laughs> Opened the door, and there was Elvis sitting on the commode. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Would you close that door there, Hank? Hey, I'll take some fries with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Listen, uh, serious business about this Elvis stamp, and uh, I want white people to, to really think about 
what they're doing. You know, we, we talk about duplicity, we talk about the double standards, we talk about the outright lying by white people, but here you are, we realize that the drug problem is the most serious social problem facing this country. And it's not just because you got black kids on drugs. Uh, Eighty six percent of the people who are on drugs and who use cocaine in this country are white. But you've got this serious problem and we're taking a man, a known drug addict, died of a drug overdose. Somehow or another, you know, while you know, I'm not for condemning him for that, he's dead and buried now, but you're elevating this man to the equivalent of a sainthood here in this country. And, and white people really need to take a look at what they're doing. Apparently they're not going to. So by using these double standards, and then on the other hand, they will sit up and decry how society is falling apart, how there are no morals, how everything that's good and sacred, and you got these presidential candidates each trying to outdo the other, talking about family values and the value of clean living. But we're going to honor a drug addict. Uh, I just hope some white person calls in before you leave there tonight. Well, Hank, let me let me throw something at you because you are an intelligent guy with a with a real knack for analyzing things. Explain to me all of the furor over Otis Nixon. You heard the people calling up when Otis Nixon was like a three-time loser uh -huh. in terms of his drug tests and how the white folks were saying that he was a hero and our kids shouldn't be looking up to uh, role models. He was a role model, and our kids should be making heroes out of folks like Otis Nixon, and he should never come back to play for the Braves. And then on the other hand, we're going to have a stamp to commemorate the drug use of this clown. I don't understand it. I don't either, Rap. I really don't, and there are times when, let's say, if I could get through to Rush Limbaugh and some of the other folks who are all for family values, I'd love to ask them that question and try to get them to explain it to me. Okay, hey. Take hey, care, my friend. Appreciate you calling. Give me some fries with that there, man. You know, just like I tell you what's going to happen to this Elvis stamp. Just like that Susan B. Anthony dollar that came out that looked like a quarter that brothers boycotted and the sisters boycotted, we said, no, we don't want this Susan B. Anthony dollar. We said it was bad luck. We said that two dollar bill was janky. You know, I, no, <laughs> I guarantee you, you won't reach in your pocket right now. I guarantee you, you won't find anybody in my posse with a two dollar bill in their pocket, right? It's enough to make you go crazy, right? You won't find a two dollar bill in your pocket. And you won't find a Susan B. Anthony dollar in your pocket either, will you? And I tell you, let's make a vow right here and now. Put your hands on the radio and repeat after me. I swear, I swear, by everything sacred, by everything sacred, to the talk how you like underground posse, to the talk how you like underground posse, that I will never open a letter, that I will never open a letter with an Elvis stamp on it, with an Elvis stamp on it. Be it a bill, be it a bill, be it a love letter, be it a love letter, or be it a welfare check. I will not open a stamp with Elvis Presley, I mean, I will not open an envelope with an Elvis Presley stamp on it. If you do, I hope you go crazy. So help me God. Two dollar bill. Crazy. Susan B. Anthony dollar. Crazy. Elvis stamp. Bad luck. It's a jinx. Crazy. It's taboo. Taboo. Crazy, baby. It's taboo, brothers. Bawana. Bawana got strange medicine in Elvis stamp. No lickum stamp. Hi, this is Neil Bortz making sense out of the presidential campaign. Making sense by telling you it doesn't make any sense. Tune in and find out why the Neil Bortz program, 9 to noon every weekday right here on News Radio 640 WGST. That's right. Even though we're News Radio, we do talk. Alka-Seltzer Plus asks, why take a cold medicine that's mainly for your nose? Tough winter colds give you aches, too. And what about your sore throat? The leading cold pill's not tough enough for those symptoms, but one cold medicine is. Alka-Seltzer Plus, with a combination of ingredients tough enough to relieve more symptoms than the leading cold pill. It's tough to see why anyone would use anything else. Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine. Tough medicine for tough winter colds. Use only as directed. Richard Farnsworth is Sheriff Cody McPherson. You threw a heck of a punch for a kid. Wilford Brimley is his deputy. Bill Huntoon. Quit calling me kid!
ahead. Keeping order in this sleepy town in Utah takes cleverness. Country person don't do things like a city person does. It takes bravery. You may get one of us, but you ain't gonna get us both. It takes the boys of Twilight. Wish the blazes I could figure out which one of us was the sidekick. The Boys of Twilight premieres Saturday, February 29th on CBS. This winter, every few minutes, someone catches the flu. <coughs> I don't feel good. When it happens to you, take new Dristan Cold and Flu. It has four powerful flu fighters that are released to make a hot, soothing drink. Ah. It relieves your cough, fever, sore throat, congestion, and headache. New Dristan Cold and Flu. The face of relief today. Use as directed. We'll look for a drying and clearing process on Wednesday. This is Bill Limmer from the Weather Channel. We'll update your three-day forecast with Tom Hughes tomorrow morning on News Radio 640, WGST Atlanta. Back at you. I'll be crying every day. Yeah, Ann. You're right, Ann. You're right, Ann. I can't let you. 233 WGST. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I can't stand Elvis. I don't like Elvis, nor do I like anybody that likes Elvis. I tell you, anybody that likes Elvis rides the short school buses, you know? Because Elvis was like a retard, really, you know? He was a, a short school bus rider himself, you know? He was a short school bus rider, Elvis Presley, you know? Oh, thank you, all. Thank you very much. I rode the short bus to school now. <laughs> Sucker! Helena, Stone Mountain, you're on News Radio 640 WGS. Mr. Ralph. Yeah. Um, golly. I am so all struck by being able to talk to you. But um, I'm not a fan of Elvis, so we can establish that right now. Okay. Um, in my 40s, and um, let's see, what I really wanted to talk to you about is when I go into the grocery store, okay. I graduated from Vanderbilt, and I don't want you to clap or cheer or anything like that, but, you know, I was born and reared in the South, right? Uh-huh. And I believe we had gotten over integration. I really do. <laughs> Meaning my family and, and everyone that I grew up with. Mm-hmm. What really distresses me is when I go into the store and it, black people, you know, look at me or don't look at me with, oh golly, they, they just don't like to look at me. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, you're laughing at me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. See, you suffering. You suffering, uh, Eleanor. And I am. You suffering yes, from. You suffering, and what you need to do hmm. is is to lighten up a little bit. All right. See, you got to start doing like we as a people do. And when I say we, my people, we live, we judge people on an individual basis. We go one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, there, there are fools in both races, black and white. If I a know. black person looks at me crazy, you know, at, in a grocery store, you know, but I don't worry they, about it. Nor do, do I worry about it when a white person looks at me crazy. But you what know? if they don't look at you, Ralph? I mean, you well, know, when, when I come We were trained store. not to even look at white women. You know, it was a law, uh, Eleanor, that if you looked a white woman straight in the eye, you could get locked up. They called it reckless eyeballing. I'm serious. I'm serious. You know, you're right. You're absolutely right. But you know? what? But what about when black ladies or you know black women, you know, don't look at you or black babies or <laughs> don't. Ellen, what Ellen. if they? Yes. I gotta go, darling. I mean, we're not going anywhere with this as far as you know people looking at somebody and letting out your heart be trouble. Lighten up, you know. Lighten up. Just lighten up and take a deep breath when you go in the store. Get some dark glasses like me. You know, and start mumbling to yourself, you know, you know, uh, when, you, when people don't look at you, curse them out of some. Don't, you know, we'll do a show about people not looking at you when you go in the grocery store, and I'll let you be my guest. Richard Smyrna, you're on News Radio 640 WGSD. Ralph, I've got so many things to say tonight. So many things. Mm -hmm. First thing I'd like to say is I'm a long time listener and a first time caller. All right, that ain't going to get you nowhere. Hurry up, get the way you're going. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. And thank you. Say, thank you for listening and, and things, too. 
Okay, it's good. Well, anyway, first thing is um, I like to identify myself as a white person. Well, now I'm all white. Don't buy, 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 buy. Don't. Everybody want to qualify. Well, I'm white. You know what I mean? Don't, don't do me like that. You know? They don't call Rush Limbaugh and say, Rush, uh, first of all, I'm white. You know, they don't do that. They don't call Neil. Neil, well, I guess you can tell I'm white. And why y'all going to put that on me? Hi, this is Neil Bortz. I get to take 10 couples to Braves training camp in March. That's right, a free weekend in West Palm Beach. We'll even be staying at the Braves Hotel and go to three of their preseason games. All the details on how you can win will be arriving in your Sunday newspaper on March the 1st. Watch for my picture. What a great picture in our 16-page magazine insert. And keep listening to 640 WGSD, the new radio home of the Atlanta Braves. Can Huddle newspaper. Hey there, Charlie. What you doing? Can but Oh, boy. I'm just uh, separating my cans, my bottles, my newspapers for recycling. Good for you, Charlie. Yeah, can bottle newspaper there. Well, you know, we all have to do something. We just can't keep going the way we're going. Uh, that's mighty good to hear you say that, Charlie. Yeah. Well, I suppose you're taking Marta, too. Marta. It's a good thing, too, because this air pollution in Atlanta is a real problem. You know what? Yeah. But if more people were like you and me, we might be able to do something about that. Right. Can't. Why, if it yeah. weren't for people like you and me who do ride Marta, well, who knows how bad it'd be. It'd be pretty bad, Bo. Let me Say, Charlie. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I give you a lift to the station? Oh, no, no, no. I like to walk. You know how it is. Healthy. Good. Oh, good, good, good. so you take the bus to the station, well, actually, Charlie. Oh, I... good for you, Charlie. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, pal. Sure. See you tomorrow, Bo. Cans, bottles, newspapers. If you really want to do something to help clean up the environment, shouldn't you be taking MARTA more often? MARTA. It really is smarter. Speaking of smarter, I want you to pick up a copy of the March edition of the Atlanta Magazine. As much as I dislike that jive rag, the Atlanta Magazine it ain't nothing but some, some, some mess. It's a communist plot. That's all the Atlanta Magazine is. That sucker Lee Walburn and that clown, uh... uh What's that clown's name that begged us to take him to lunch and never... Logan Mabe begged to get the route from Ben Hill's third and All he did was slam me, slam me, calling me Atlanta's number one hobophobe and all of that. But listen, go pick up a copy of the Atlanta magazine. Go, go. Now, what was the name of that book when we were in school? It's called Steal This Book. I would say go rip off a copy, but that would be illegal. Go borrow a copy of the Atlanta magazine. Don't buy it. Go borrow a copy and just flip around and they'll show you all of the beautiful homes in that magazine of the big time stars in town. And my friends at Branch Pennington and Associates had a lot to do with some of those big homes that you see in the magazine, especially Bobby Brown's home. It is the best home, the, the nicest looking. It looks like an English Tudor-style crib. It's, it's, a, it's like a castle. And Branch Pennington and Associates arranged this. So you would think that when big-time stars come to town like Hammer or Dion, when the Falcons sign somebody, or when the Hawks sign a big player, that when they come to town, they would automatically find, and since most of them are black, they would automatically find uh, their way to their own black people to look for, you know, the type of homes and the type of sensitive personal treatment that Branch Pennington offers. And I'm talking about 360 degrees. If you ever notice why Dion lives in Duluth, or you ask yourself, why do all of these stars like Andre Bruce get ripped off and they live way up and out of the city? It's because they didn't call Branch Pennington and Associates. Now, you got these other folks out here that are going to tell you, well, Ralph, you're, you're being, you know, no, 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 no. I'm telling you that you need to spend your money with those who strengthen and support you. And my friends at Branch Pennington and Associates are all about strengthening and supporting you. Every time they sell a home, they add that person to their list, babyface. Uh, Bobby Brown, you know, all the boys that come in town. When they come in town, they look for Bob Branch, uh, Pennington and Associates, you know, and Bobby Brown's crib is the place they all stop. Even my main man, Keith Sweat, just moved in town with that winding purple staircase. Give my friends at Branch Pennington a call. Their number is 843-2626. No matter what your real estate need is, my friend Bobby Brown wanted a studio. He called Branch Pennington. He wanted a crib. He wanted some place to put Whitney up. He called Branch Pennington. That's what you need to do. Call Rick Branch or Christy Pennington at 843-2626. If you want to sell or you want to buy, you should at least own the land in which you live. Now, if you're renting, you know, you might not can help it right now, but at least think about getting out of that apartment. Think about getting out of that rental property. Sign your name on a contract. Get some equity on your money. That's the first step to being a man is when you own the land in which you live. You ask the slaves about owning land, they'll tell you. 
Now, if this record is being played at a club, disco, lounge, house, basement, or block party, car stereo, stoop, or at any other social gathering, we will now allow the beat to continue and proceed to give you more of what you like. Thank you very much. This message has been brought to you by the makers of the Wave thank and Swing you. and the Underground Talk How You Like Posse. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we've got about five minutes, so I'm going to give each person on hold one minute to slam Elvis. No, 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 no. Just make your comments about Elvis Presley. As I look at my board, everybody's in line to talk about Elvis, so we'll give them that time. Let's go to John on the mobile phone first. You're on News Radio 640 WGST. Hello, Ralph. Hello, John. Um, just on the Elvis thing, I like his music, but I don't particularly like him. Uh, just like I love the music of The Doors, but I thought Jim Morrison was a scummy human being. So I'm just really evaluating the music of the person. The Postal Service will make probably millions of dollars off of people who will buy those stamps and not use them. True. So, you know, I'm, and, and... Good you know, point, good point, John. I'm not, my silence is, I'm not laying in, in wait to, to attack your call, but your comments are, are, are noted and well taken. A lot of people are going to buy this stamp no matter what you say about Elvis. And the way you said it, how you liked the doors, but you didn't like the, I mean, you liked the music, but you didn't like the drug taking and all that. Yeah. I didn't like Elvis, nor did I like his music. I can't find nothing funky. You know, I never saw an Elvis record rated on American Bandstand. It didn't have a beat. It didn't have a, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've been to a million parties in my life, and I've danced Danced off some crazy records, man. Shorty Long, Function at the Junction, uh, Hank Ballard, there's a thrill on the hill, but I have never moved my feet nor shaken my butt to an Elvis Presley cut. And in Marietta, you're on News Radio 640 WGSC. Yeah, how you doing, Ralph? Great, I, I Ann. to you all the time. Bless you, darling. Really like you. And I'm from Memphis. <laughs> oh, Lord. And I just want to let you know that Elvis Presley did grow up in the ghetto. As a matter of fact, a black ghetto called Hume's uh, Homes. Well, why was he so hard on the brothers? I don't know. But I tell you one thing, he should have sold from where he came from. <laughs> because he lived right there in that ghetto at Humes Junior High School where he went to school. <laughs> so he should have had so He should have You think El El was Elvis messing with the sisters? That's what you're telling me? Ah, uh, hey, the you know what the old saying used to be when we were coming up? What's that? You have to get tapped and you know what's how to dance. <laughs> <laughs> you bad, man. Jim, Southwest Atlanta. Quickly, quickly, Jim. Hi, Ralph. Hey. Uh, I agree with you about the Elvis stamp, but I have a question for you. Right, which, which would you consider worse, uh, Elvis trying to steal the, the style of blacks or your hero, Michael, trying to bleach his skin and, you know... Don't talk about Michael! Don't talk about Michael! Stan, on the mobile phone. You're on News Radio 640 WGSC. Oh. Yeah. All right, listen to you all the time. Good. Congratulations on doing so well on your show. Thank you, man. Calling about Elvis. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, Chuck Berry and uh, Jackie Wilson went ahead of... Uh, Elvis. I'm sure he learned a lot from them. That's right. Jackie Wilson was bad, wasn't he? Well, he sure was. And Chuck Berry, I'm sure uh, yes, Elvis sir. tried to emulate. Sam Cooke, too. I can see them brothers. They shake. They shake. You know, they used to shake so much in church. You know, Sam Cooke had a jam called Shake. Shake. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Shake. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Hey, you know, hey. Michael Jackson, he bleached his skin. Yeah, true enough. But Michael Jackson didn't steal nothing from the white folks, you know. Michael Jackson is just that bad. Now, we'll do a Michael Jackson show tonight. It's Elvis. And I tell you, just like the $2 bill, just like that Susan B. Anthony quarter or that Susan B. Anthony dollar that everybody mistook for a quarter, that is the doom of the Elvis Presley stamp. I now return the power of your radio back to you. You have my permission now to watch the Grammys. It's going to get good now. They're going to get to the soul and the R&B. And they threw with the country and the gospel and all that other mess and the rock and all of that new stuff they made up to get these rockabillies or some kind of award, you know. <laughs> In the meantime, we've got three full hours of power tomorrow night. That's right. Three hours of the Talk How You Like Underground Posse. And then I'll be back Thursday also. So in the meantime, my posse, run out and get a copy of uh, this magazine called Dollars and Cents. See that beautiful picture of Donna Lowry and Ralph from Ben Hill. That's right. Ralph and Donna in dollars and cents. In the meantime, my posse, don't do as I say do. Do as I do do. Live large and prosper. Let's get out of here. Hi, this is Don Sutton for Marietta Toyota, Cobb County's oldest Toyota dealer. Are you thinking about a new Toyota car or truck? Well, you ought to get yourself on over to Marietta Toyota this week for the $99 sale. That's right, brand new 92 Tercels Corollas, Silicas, and trucks. Just $99 over dealer invoice. And that's right, 
any new 92 Toyota Corolla in stock, $99 over dealer invoice. Say you need a 92 Toyota truck, find one at Marietta Toyota, $99 over invoice. Now, all the invoices are right there on display for public viewing, so there's no guesswork, there's no gimmick, and there's no chance of hidden charges. How about a new 92 Tercel or Sporty Celica? Again, $99 over invoice. The entire inventory is eligible. The invoices are on display. Come in and make a great deal with the Marietta Toyota salesman. This Saturday, free hot dogs and hamburgers, 11 to 2. Marietta Toyota, 750 Cobb Parkway in Marietta. The $99 sale ends Monday. Don't miss it. This is the radio home of the Atlanta Hawks. I'm head coach Bob Weiss. Hear every game right here on News Radio 640 WGST Atlanta. Good evening. It's cloudy and 61 degrees. I'm Gene Michaels, News Radio 640 WGST. Tomorrow, showers in the morning, clearing off in the afternoon, the high around 58 degrees. Atlanta's official three day weather forecast is coming up. Here's what's happening now at 10 o'clock. ABC News estimates that when the final votes are counted and the Republican primary in South Dakota, uncommitted is likely to win at least 30% of the vote. Nebraska Senator Bob Kerry has won the South Dakota Democratic primary. It's Kerry's first triumph in the presidential primary season. Kathleen Frankovic, CBS Director of Surveys, says South Dakota voters apparently felt closer to Nebraska Senator Bob Kerry than to the other Democrats in the pack. Bob Kerry has pulled out to a good lead, solid lead, over the two people who are now fighting it out for second place in South Dakota. Um, as a neighbor coming from a neighboring state, that seems to have worked to his advantage and not to the advantage of um, Tom Harkin, um, who also needed to win here. President Bush was not in South Dakota. He was in California and still is on a campaign swing. It's the first stop of a six-day trip. ABC's John Bascom is traveling with the president, who is now in San Francisco. In remarks prepared for a fundraiser here in San Francisco, Mr. Bush painted Democrats, all Democrats, as not acting in the good of the country because those Democrats in Congress won't pass his economic package. Mr. Bush said instead congressional Democrats want to give a tax cut written in invisible ink in exchange for a huge tax hike chiseled in stone. He said, you can count on one thing. The Democrats are going to tax the middle class for the same reason Willie Sutton robbed banks, because that's where the money is. John Bascom, ABC News, with the president in California. The Senate has voted to put some new conditions on the renewal of China's most favored nation trade status. The measure was approved after senators met in a rare private session to hear reports on Chinese arms sales to the Middle East. Mike Tyson's sentencing on a rape conviction will be a day earlier than originally scheduled because of the prosecution's scheduling problems. The boxer will be sentenced on March 26 in Indianapolis. He was convicted on February 10th. Convicted last week of killing an Alabama man during an armed robbery of a motel room and his occupants, a 33-year-old Atlanta man was formally sentenced today. News Radio 640 WGSC's Howard Gunner reports that Raymond Burgess showed no emotion in a Douglas County courtroom as he received the death penalty. It is hereby ordered to judge and decree that the defendant, Raymond Burgess, be punished for the murder of Liston Chun by death in the manner prescribed by law. Douglas Superior Court Judge Robert James carrying out a jury's verdict. Burgess was found guilty of malice murder, multiple counts of kidnap and armed robbery, and the 1990 death of Liston Chun. Seeing his client was mentally handicapped and used by an accomplice, defense attorney Jack Martin asked for life in prison. He was angered by the prosecution's suggestion this would bring parole and Burgess would be free to kill again. Martin insisted to me that...